Lesson 11.9, Apply Volume Formulas. This is Lesson 11.10 in the 2012 copyright. A formula is a set of symbols used to state a mathematical rule. A equals B times H means area is equal to the base multiplied to the height. We learned about base, edges, and sides of 3D figures in 11.4, and these are linked in the description if you need them. We can use a formula to find the volume of a rectangular prism. If we know the dimensions of the rectangular prism, we can use those dimensions in the formula. V is equal to B times H for volume is equal to base times height. Or V is equal to L times W times H. That's length times width times height to find its volume quickly and efficiently. We write the volume using cubic units. Both of these prisms have the same dimensions and the same volume. We've got a length of 4 and a width of 3. This one also has a length of 4 and a width of 3. And they both have a height of 3 centimeters. We can do 4 times 3 is 12 for the base. Multiply that by the height and we find that it's 36 centimeters cubed or cubic centimeters because it's in centimeters. We can also do 4 times 3 times 3 and get 36 cubic centimeters. So using this volume formula, volume is equal to length times width times height, we can write it as V, it's a capital V, is equal to L times W times H. We can also write it just as V is equal to LWH, because when variables are next to each other, we multiply their values. We multiply the length by the width. We've got 6 centimeters times 3 centimeters. That's 18. Then multiply the product, 18, by the height, 5. And 18 times 5 is 90. It's in centimeters. We've got three dimensions. It's 90 cubic centimeters. Or we can write it as a CM abbreviation for centimeters, and a little three exponent for cubed. So another volume formula uses base. And the base is the length times the width that gives us the area of one base in inches squared, because it's a flat surface, 2D surface, the base is. And we multiply the base, that 28, times the height 2, and we get 56 inches cubed, or cubic inches. So notice that the base was doing length times width. That's two dimensions, so it has a little two exponent for the two dimensions. Once we multiplied it by the height, that was our third dimension, it's in cubic inches. We have a little three exponent. We can use the associative property to group the part of the formula that represents area. Area is found by multiplying length and width, so we can write the formula, the area of one base, as length times width. And volume is the product of one base, so it's either this base or this base, it's one of the bases, and the height. And we learned about face, edge, and base parts of a 3D figure in video 11.4. We can also use the formula for volume to help us find an unknown dimension. So here, the height is missing. And there should be three dimensions. We have our length, we have our width, but we don't have the height. But it is telling us that the volume is equal to 200 cubic inches. We do length times width, which is 10 times 4. That's going to give us a 40. So 40 times some number height is going to equal 200. We think 40 times a number equals 200, or we can use the inverse, 200 divided by 40 equals the unknown number. Do you know what it is? If you said 5, you're right. 40 times 5 is equal to 200, so we know the height must be 5 inches. For this one, the length is missing. It's telling us that the volume is 30 cubic feet. 
We don't have the length, but we do know that the width is 2 feet and the height is 5 feet. So 30 is equal to some length times 2 times 5. Well, 2 times 5 is 10. When we multiply the width and the height, then we can find 10 times some number equals 30. Well, 3 times 10 is equal to 30, so the length must be 3 feet. We just multiply together the dimensions that we do have, and we can either use division or think of what the unknown number can be that will equal that product. Tyler keeps her ponytail holders and headbands in a box, and the length is twice the width, the width is twice the height, and the height is three inches. What is the volume of the box? So we think, well, because the length is twice the width, we need to find the width first using the given height. So it says the width is twice the height. The height is three inches. So we have the height, that's three inches, and the width is twice the height. So it's two times three, that's six inches. Now we know the length is twice the width. If the width is six inches, the length is two times six inches. It's 12 inches. Now that we have our three dimensions, we can multiply 12 times 6, which is 72. Multiply that by the height, 3, we get 216. It's in inches, because the height says 3 inches, so these are inches. So we know that it's 216 cubic inches. And we can write it as C-U-I-N for the abbreviation, or we can write it as an IN with a little three exponent showing we had three dimensions, inches cubed. Mr. Park installed a concrete slab to support his air conditioning unit. And the base of the slab is 30 inches by 30 inches. Its height is three inches. What is the volume of concrete in the slab? We use volume is equal to length times width times height. It's 30 inches by 30 inches for the base. 30 times 30 is 900. And we multiply that by the height, 3 inches, we get 2,700 cubic inches of concrete. So we just found Mr. Park's concrete slab volume. Mr. Lee's air conditioner sits on a concrete slab that has a base of 24 inches by 24 inches and has a height of three inches. How many fewer cubic inches of concrete is Mr. Lee's slab than Mr. Park's? So we think, we found Mr. Park's concrete slab has a volume of 2,700 cubic inches. We can find the volume of Mr. Lee's and subtract to find the difference. His is 24 by 24 for the base. That's 576. We multiply it by the height, 3 inches, and we get 1,728 cubic inches. We know Mr. Parks. We know Mr. Lee's. Now we just use subtraction and find a difference of 972 cubic inches. So Mr. Lee's is 972 cubic inches less than Mr. Parks. So as you move forward in math, you're going to find a formula where the volume is equal to the base times the height, and the base is just the length times the width, or you're going to see the formula volume is equal to length times width times height. Either one will get you the same cubic units. As you're doing this, remember that volume involves three measures, three dimensions, length, width, and height. Area is the one that only involves two, length and width. So be very careful. In our next lesson, 11.10, we're going to do some word problem solving, and we're going to compare volumes. We're going to make a table. I hope you're doing well. I hope I'll see you there, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.